A-plus mock draft time once again here in the Sportsocracy at ESPN. Draft nerd Jeremy Green has the perfect solution for the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> we all know what they're going to do at number one. No doubt. Uh, at this point, the betting markets are daring you to take anybody else. And, and frankly, this is the solution you should have gotten to in the first place because he is the best quarterback in this class. I don't really think it's all that close. And the further down we go, the more I think that's going to bear itself out. So Bryce Young, quarterback out of Alabama, goes number one overall. Look, 5'10", 204, he'll be the first quarterback under 207 pounds to go in the first round of the modern NFL draft. And guess what? Do you know how much of that I care about? (laughs) Zero. Uh, I don't. I just flat out don't care. Uh, I've said this time and time and time again. When it comes to grades, you're just watching things on the field, the intangibles, all that. He and C.J. Stroud are not close. If he was in C.J. Stroud's body, this would have been the easiest choice ever. And I think Carolina's getting it right. It's not ironic that this is the first time you'll have a quarterback this thin go in the first round as the game is getting smaller and faster and shiftier. So now I I bring in this quarterback that just throws darts. I've heard the Drew Brees comparison I'm not as wild about that. He's way more Russell Wilson. Good Russell, not let's ride Denver Broncos Russell Wilson. Well, thank God for that. Yeah, you wouldn't be taking that at one. I'm not sure you'd be taking that at all. Uh, I mean, I see the Drew Brees thing because he is hyper accurate. A lot has been made of uh, of does he have the deep ball arm? Is he going to uncork a lot of 70 yarders? No. Do I really need him to? No. No. Does he have the weapons for that? No. No. (laughs) So, I mean, if you're looking for – Bryce Young, to me, is an old-school thinking man's quarterback because, yeah, he does have the physical limitations, but he's so good at avoiding pass rush. He's so good at never getting hurt, never getting hit. And I just – I love the kid. I've loved the kid the entire time, and and I'm really – it's encouraging. If I were a Panther fan, we were Panther affiliates. We are not Panther fans, per se. It would be really encouraging to me that the staff, this front office, they all came together, and I think they had a lean to C.J. Stroud early, and then they started diving into the tape, and they started diving into the fit, and they came together and they made the right decision. Mm-hmm. Can I tell you he's going to be a better pro than the other three? No. I would say your probability is exponentially higher, and I do not see a bust potential for Bryce Young. I think worst-case scenario, he's a top 15 quarterback in the league. I think that's your floor. Ceiling is, we look back on this and go, hey, you remember You remember when we thought that one of these other three guys might be better? That was awesome. Could the Carolina Panthers have another MVP quarterback taken at number one overall? Time will tell. In the second round, they've got pick number 39. I, I still feel like you need another weapon. The, my problem with the receiving core here is, especially now that I think Jonathan Mingo is going to go in the back end of the first round, there's just not a lot of – there's a lot of guys that are the exact same piece. They're 5'8", they're 5'9", five, 5'10", five, five, weigh a buck up 80. I'm good. I want to go get a height, weight, speed guy that, that's a legit, big, safety blanket target. I know you signed Hayden Hurst, but his high side is nowhere near the high side of Luke Musgrave, tight end out of Oregon State. I am well aware he's coming off a knee injury. I'm well aware that there is not a ton of tape on him. So there is bust potential. I'd be lying if I said there wasn't. Mm -hmm. That's why you can get him uh, here in the second round. If he had played three consecutive years and continued to put on tape, what he has put on tape in that 2020 COVID year and last year before he got hurt, he'd have gone to the top 20. You know, 6'6", 253 pounds, runs like a gazelle, just freakishly athletic. I mean, this is a modern-day NFL tight end. And if you're wanting to, if you're wanting to take some of the heat off Bryce Young, you're worried about his size, whatever the case may be, this is a field stretcher tight end down the middle that will keep those safeties out of the box. It'll keep that extra blitzer away. Because now I'm looking at that and Terrace Marshall and DJ Tark. These are all guys that can hurt me over the tar, uh, over the top. I think this is a perfect complement. Even though tight end is not their biggest need, they need a weapon, and this is the best weapon on the board. They also need another edge rusher on the other side of Brian Burns. I love this guy so much. And with number 93 overall, Yaya Diaby from Louisville. If you were just sculpting a pass rusher, it would probably be Yaya Diaby. 4-5-1 at 6-3, 263 pounds. That's moving. 
he's th- there's a lot to be round off with him. He's a very late bloomer. He started out in JUCO, became one of the highest recruited JUCO players in the country, wound up at Louisville, and it just wasn't a very good defense. And so you have to really start digging to find the the good tape on him. But then when you find the good and you really lay on the good, that's when you see the the potential. I did not have him as a day two pick until I dug a little deeper because he is currently, I win by out speed rushing you to the outside. There is not a, a bevy of moves right now. And I think he's going to have to develop that. I'm not sure that he doesn't benefit from standing up. I'm not sure that, that, that that's not the, the ultimate goal with him. I also think he will greatly benefit having Brian Burns on the other side of him. Because if you get him one-on-one and he goes up against one of these, and I hate to use Trent Williams because he's best tackle in the league, mm-hmm. he goes up against one of these six, eight, 330-pound statuesque linemen, yeah, if they get their hands on him, it's going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. But getting their hands on him is going to be a problem because he's got a crazy burst off the edge. In the fourth round, they got two picks. First one is at 114. Uh, This guy is one of the great trivia facts that you'll ever hear in your life. Uh, When he starts a game in the NFL, and he's going to, he will be the first white cornerback to start in the NFL since Jason Seahorn. (laughs) It's been a long while. Riley Moss, cornerback out of Iowa. There's a lot to like about him. I do have to throw the initial, I'm not going to say this is a wet blanket on him, there are teams that have evaluated him as a safety. Now, I heard way more of that before he ran a four four five, because I don't think people saw that coming. Mm-hmm. And you watch him on tape, he doesn't necessarily always play that fast. And you have to be careful with those guys. Some of the biggest busts I've ever seen were corners that we missed their 40 time by a tenth of a second or more. Because I evaluate that by the way you play. And there are metrics that I can load your tape, and it will tell me how fast you're running. I ne- I mean, there were times that I saw, okay, he's, he's quick. I think he's more long stride fast than he is shifty, and there are teams that think he's a safety. I am not one of those. I think he can, especially if he's playing off in zone and he can read and react, I think he can be a very quality corner in this league. It may be a little bit of a project, but when you look at Carolina with Dante Jackson, with C.J. Henderson, with J.C. Horn, you have the ability to back off him for a year, It could ultimately be the replacement to Dante Dante Jackson, who you know I'm – we'll say I'm not his biggest fan. And so if you're patient with him for a year, worst-case scenario, you draft a really good rangy safety. Best-case scenario, you have an outside corner uh, a year down the line. It feels weird to say that the Carolina Panthers have a – well, they have a they have a pretty good offensive line. Doesn't that feel weird? It does feel weird. After screaming for years that they address the offensive line – Maybe they add some depth at number 132. Uh, this is, let me, I'm going to put this, uh, and I think this is how I put it on the graphic. This dude is a motherfucking house. Uh, <laughs> 6'4", 332 pounds. Good Anthony night. Bradford. Uh, he's a guard out of LSU. If you're looking for production, it's not there. All right. In terms of the, the, the on-field production, he's not in the top 10 of guards in this class. Now. The talent is very obvious. I feel like at times he was miscast, especially with Brian Kelly. It's just, you're wanting to play fast with Jaden Daniels and running to the outside, and then you have this double wide with a blowed out tire that can't run to the outside. So I've got this mobile quarterback, and I want a pull guard, and I've got uh, 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 Mount Bradford here that's trying to get out in front of him. That's not what he does. This is the guard that you put on the right side and you run right behind his ass because wherever he goes, good things are going to happen. Right. And that takes him a minute to get there. You know, when you have a guy this size, very rarely do you have that Makai Becton that runs a 5'1 at 6'7", 370 pounds. And he's not that guy. The athleticism is not there. Now, you put him in the in, in the space that he needs to be in. If he ever plays a down at tackle in the NFL, you have done something horribly wrong. And p- quite possibly you have four dead linemen somewhere because that's the only dead. thing that makes sense. Right. But if you bring him in with the intent, he is going to be the guard. And and I'll be honest with you, I love the thought of him on the uh, on the inside of Aquanu long term because Aquanu is such a move piece and such a bulldog and so good in space that it can kind of hide him. And now it becomes, well, I'm going to run right down your throat to the left side, and there is not a damn thing you can do about it. 
All right, and a brand new fan favorite to the Charlotte market in the fifth round at number 145 overall. The Carolina Panthers wrap up the A plus mock draft here with Bumper Pool. Uh, first of all, that is the most ridiculous name in the history of time. <laughs> it's also the only time I've ever, uh, in doing the the side graphics and shit, th that I've Googled a prospect's name, and it starts trying to sell me pool tables. That's a first. 6'2", <laughs> 232 pounds, not hyper-athletic. Um, all right, so if the entire screen where my face is, is the range of outcomes, and the border on the top of my head is your ceiling, and the border on the bottom is your floor uh the difference for him is about that much because i damn near can promise you what he's going to be in the league he will come in as a dedicated will linebacker mike linebacker and it's kind of dicey as to which one of the it, it, scheme wise which one he's going to be mm -hmm. he brings you absolutely nothing as a pass rusher but he is a chase and tackle linebacker if you like 25 years ago, this kid would have been a second, third round pick. Right. The game's changed. So now he's really a two down linebacker that in the run, you might see him get washed out, but he's very mobile. He's very shifty and he holds up against the pass. Uh, and, and I think with what Carolina is doing in the beginning, he would be a special team. So I think he's going to be a special team's ace, no matter what. Well, he only ran four or seven. I don't care. Yeah. Do, do you know how many Matthew Slaters there are out there that, well, they didn't run fast, and then they wound up being special, shoehorned into special teams. He's kind of the same guy. Mm -hmm. He's a pretty sure tackler. It's just you have to know that there are physical limitations that he is never going to get past. Uh, one of the most experienced players in this class, too. Played twenty, almost 2,700 snaps at, at Arkansas. So you're getting a very refined product here. He just is what he is. Mm -hmm. If you, It's kind of like the, the hurricane rock. Uh, if you expect it to protect your house, you're going to be really disappointed. All right, the Carolina Panthers A-plus mock draft. It all starts at number one overall after the trade with the Chicago Bears. You give up DJ Moore, but you get Bryce Young. Look, I mean, and, and for Carolina, you've done so well in the offseason. I, I think you've done so, especially in free agency, where you've just added these pieces where I don't go in going, I have to have a blank. I feel like there's not a gaping hole anywhere on this team except quarterback, and that's why you gave up the tremendous draft capital to go up and get Bryce Young. Do I love that you had to give up a future first-round pick for it? No. Do I love that you had to give up DJ Moore for it? No. But it's what it cost. And so if Bryce Young is your quarterback for the next 10 years, I can look at, well, Adam Thielen's your two. All right, well, I'm going to survive for that a year. The NFC's weak uh, by comparison to the AFC. Mm -hmm. I'm, I firmly believe what I'm getting ready to say. There is a better than 30% chance that the Carolina Panthers win this division next year. If you told me right now I could have any team, I'm not sure I wouldn't take Carolina, even with a rookie quarterback. Really? Because their high side is, I know what the Saints are. I think I know what Atlanta's going to be offensively. The defense is really good, and I love what Atlanta's done. But I'm just looking at Carolina going, okay, I think I have, I think I win coaching staff. Yep. I may have the best quarterback. Maybe. I have one of the better defenses. I, I, at this point, I think Atlanta and, and New Orleans are significantly past them. And that's really a credit to Scott Fitterer and to Frank Reich and, and to this entire staff coming together and going, we're here to chew bubble gum and fuck shit up, and I'm all out of bubble gum. That's right. And that's where the Carolina Panthers are. Yep. If you like these picks, if you hate these picks, if you just want to call me a big mullet of dipshit with a stupid... <laughs> Uh, feel free to do that in the comments. We'll have one more mock draft coming out. That is my seven-round projection that is going into the media contest. No double-up players. This is how I think the seven rounds of the NFL draft will go. That will be coming out next week before we're live in real color for every pick of the 2023 NFL draft right here on YouTube. Like this video, share it out with your friends as well. Don't forget to subscribe. And that way you can get all of the Draftmas season content right here in the Sportsocracy. And yes, we will see you on Draft Night.